Hey, what the hell are you wearing? I, I'm wearing Dan's like goth metal Santa hat because I couldn't find my Santa hat. And I had to wear something festive. So this is Dan's like, I'm an old goth Santa hat that he said I could borrow. And I'm wearing Jingle Bells. And I have a forcibly festive kitty who was a little mad at me. Well, what did you do? What? What did you do to the kitty? I hate the pretty little bowl. What did you do to the cat? I'm with the cat. I I understand. Me and that cat are, are, are we we would bond if we ever met in person. Because we both we both be like, why did she do that to you? I don't know. She's like, I'm so exploited. Well, I want I, I want I want you to make me millions of dollars, like Grumpy Cat. That bitch makes tons of money off her cat, and you're way cuter. Yeah, well, yours won't look at the camera. And grumpier. Yours won't look at the camera. No, she won't. She's like, no, fuck you. You're not living off me. Sponging off my little face. Well, we, we had... Uh, okay. um, I'm take out. Greg from uh, Isle of Rangoon made us something a little special. Oh. Did you see this? I don't know. Let me send this over your way, and I'm going to play it for everybody. We, that's not That's not it, computer. Computer, why, why are you, you know, every fucking time, whenever it's time for me to actually do shit, the computer wants to be an ass. That's it. There you go. And let, let, let me play it here for everybody at home. Got a quick little thing here. It's the most what the fuck time of the week. With the nap taking pilots and Chuck E. Cheese riots, who are all these freaks? It's the most what the fuck time of the week. It's the crap, crappiest news of it all. With revenge via poop and fist fights over coupons, buy cars with your balls. It's the crap, crappiest news of it all. If it's got holes, folks will fuck it. Have sex for McNuggets. Can we just cut off Florida? There will be some amazing displays of new crazy. What's wrong with you, you big dumb fuck? It's a great big bag of dicks on parade. Though we don't want to see them, they're eager to free them. Please put that away. It's a great big bag of dicks on parade. Don't put that in your anus or injuries heinous will be broadcast all the worldwide. But what can we expect? These people got defects, bad bath salts, and meth got them all fried. Fried. It's the most what the fuck time of the week. Nash's blood pressure's rising, the dumb's agonizing, the future looks bleak. Facebook posts bragging about crimes, Jesus dick, widow, and Christ. It's the most what the fuck time of the week. That. That was... That was genius. <laughs> what have we What have we done? I'm glad you muted me, because I was muttering about my webcam app shitting the bed, so... Well, I muted me, too. Okay, and I didn't realize that I was talking through the thing, so I'm glad you muted me, so... You know. What the... F that was gorgeous, and I'm not sure who did that, but... Oh, it was D.A. Scott and Greg from Mile of Rangoon. Oh, you guys are awesome. That I, was really, really good. Well, now that we've 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 set the stage as such, 
I guess it's time to uh, actually get to the... And you know what? We're not even technically in the Christmas part. We've done the Hanukkah part. We haven't done the Christmas part. But still, it's begun already. Do the intro. Each week, Catherine, the world and the Radio Dead Air audience go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible shit, bring it back here for what we, we like to call. Crazy. What the fuck is wrong with you? And it's I'm it's begun. But let, let's. We, this is a time for tradition in, in in the world, and I wanted to talk about one that is pretty much. It's right up our alley. And it's a tradition that stretches back to um, 49 years, about 50 years, started in 1966. Um, okay. It's Sweden has a tradition where they make a giant straw goat. Yes. Why do they do that? Do we know why they do that? I'm, I'm, it's, well, it, I'm not entirely sure why, but it's because... Is it a Krampus thing? Because I saw that movie, and apparently the way to repel him was to keep the fire hot. So are they, like, burning him in effigy? Like, well, stay away from us, motherfucker? That's the thing. The problem is, it was normally just started, they make this giant goat, it's a festive, it's a decoration. And then, people started setting it on fire. Oh, that's not part of it? That's not part of it! I always thought that was part of the thing. No, it was never intended to be set on fire. Oh. It has become an annual battle. What does a goat have to do with Yule? I don't Is know. Is it a thing? I don't know. Or Christmas, or... I'm not entirely I mean, sure. I guess in your traditional manger set, there's usually a goat. But in the in the in the 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 for f almost fifty years, there is a war between the people who just want to put up their nice goat decoration and people who want to set it on fire. Sometimes they succeed, sometimes they fail. But it's it's sort of like it's it's the tradition is to attempt. Some people want to burn the goat down. It's, this is some of the most outrageous attacks. It's like really festive Devil's Night. <laughs> 1976, battered by a souped-up Volvo, oh. a, a student drove a customized Volvo Amazon at the rear legs of the goat, precipitating its collapse. 1998, burned during a blizzard. Burning a straw goat is probably not the hardest thing to do when the right sort of dry conditions, but torching one during a major blizzard, that's what the Vandals achieved in December 1998. 2001, burned down by a baffled American tourist. December 23rd, a 51-year-old American artist, Lawrence Jones, was apprehended, lighter in hand, as he watched the goat burn. He told police he had been misled by street Swedish friends who insisted torching the straw goat was a perfectly legal Swedish tradition. He spent 18 days in prison. They are not your friends. Those people are not your friends. Not your friends. 2005, burned down by arrow-wielding Santas and gingerbread men. Vandals reportedly dressed as Santa Claus and gingerbread men shot a flaming arrow at the goat. December 3rd. All right, if any of y'all have seen the movie Krampus, you know why that's actually scary. <laughs> the gingerbread men or the flaming arrow Santa? Yes. <laughs> I'm a little afraid of gingerbread men now after that movie. 2010. A failed attempt to steal the goat using a helicopter. Wow. Two mysterious, men, two mysterious men attempted to bribe a guard to leave his post watching over the giant goat in an attempt to kidnap the iconic Christmas symbol using a helicopter. Two men offered the guard $7,000 to look the other way. According to the guard, referred to only as mats, 
the two men wanted to kidnap the goat using a helicopter, take it to Sturplin in central Stockholm. This it seems is... to me that somebody knows that <laughs> one, either there's a large satanic cult in Sweden, <laughs> or two, the Greeks are trying to smuggle their fucking army. <laughs> Because, I mean, how long have they been doing this? 50 years. All of a sudden, the Greeks' economy tanks. I'm not saying they're connected. I'm just saying it's a weird coincidence. This is, this is freaking insane. The lengths to which this weird tradition has begun. This back and forth between the goat preservationists and the goat arsonists. It's like a turf war. <laughs> to burn down a giant straw goat for 50 years. <laughs> uh, someday we'll look back at the Swedish goat wars. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, well, someone pointed out, to be fair, what else is there to do in Sweden? Maybe they just want to keep warm. <laughs> I mean, as I understand it, it's pretty cold there this time of year, global warming notwithstanding. It's supposed to be 65 degrees here on Christmas. In Same Singapore. here! 60. My my forecast in Shermer, Illinois, the greater Chicago land area, my forecast is calling for 63 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 17 degrees Celsius for those of you abroad. And thunderstorms. Yeah. In Illinois on Christmas. It's rain and it's supposed to be mid 60s. We're fucked. We haven't had a white Christmas in a long time. Like, I don't think anybody really expects a white no. Christmas anymore, but it's at least supposed to be not like you shouldn't be able to wear open toe shoes comfortably. You shouldn't need self tanner to wear a dress on Christmas. Well, we have uh, speaking of, of more, I guess you would call this a, a costuming choice or. or... My kid. Remember a while back, we kept saying, why, why stop trying to commit crimes while wearing, like, superhero outfits? That's just yeah. wrong. Well, we've got a holiday edition of that. Uh-oh. 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 Is that your itchy? Knife-wielding Santa Claus. Oh! Knife-wielding Santa Claus robs KFC. Oh, Police say a man in red hat, red trousers, and a red jacket climbed through the window of a drive-thru and threatened the staff. Well, your KFC doesn't have a chimney. Wouldn't that just be horrifying if Santa, if you didn't have the chimney and Santa shows up, kicks down the door, got a knife going, what the fuck? KFC I gotta get in here! have surprisingly good cookies. Have you ever had their chocolate chip cookies? I have not. They're good. <sighs> Maybe Santa just wanted some fucking cookies. Armed robber. And a Pepsi. Pepsi and cookies, Tara? They have Pepsi at KFC. They got milk, too. I don't really like milk. With cookies? Yeah. Pepsi goes with everything, okay? Pepsi's the universal beverage. Armed robber dressed as Father Christmas climbed through the window of a drive through KFC and demanded cash. Police are appealing for witnesses to the theft at the restaurant on Hockley Way, uh, Alfreton, Derbyshire. Uh, officers said the man, described as 5 foot 10 inches and stocky, climbed through the window around 10.30 p.m. carrying a knife. He threatened staff, uh, staff and demanded money before fleeing. No, I, I'm not seeing anything about a bowl full of jelly or <laughs> with a wink and up the chimney. No, he's... Well, they don't have a chimney, so he had to wink and go back out the drive through window. Santa's... You know how hard it is to pack, park a sled and 12 reindeer in a drive through I seem to... Why have we never seen that fast food commercial? you think somebody at some point would have made that. you think somebody would have done that by now. I have, I've, never, I've never seen one like that. That is strange. <laughs> I, what are my thoughts on Crystal Pepsi coming back? I never had Crystal Pepsi, so I don't really have an opinion on it one way or the other. I'll probably try it. 
but I've never had it before. I do not share Brad's enthusiasm for the product, but uh, cool. It's it's kind of like if you a little bit of of Sprite and a little bit of Pepsi mixed together. I he I always heard it tastes like licorice. Nah, it's kind of mixed. It's kind of... But as long as they keep making my throwback, we're all good. But Jesus Christ, it's Christmas! Don't commit crimes dressed as Santa, you ass! Hey, Santa gets hungry. Have I ever told you the time about how I totally bullshit my nephew about a shoe on top of the Dunkin' Donuts? Bullshit. That's a great term. No, you, I, I don't remember this one. Well, my nephew was like three or four. You know, he was in the Y phase. Mm -hmm. And it was around Christmas time. And, you know, someone threw their fucking sneaker on top of the Dunkin' Donuts. Like happens you know yeah okay. so he was at we were in the car and he's asking my sister mommy why is there this shoe on the top of the dunkin donuts i don't know but how to get there i don't know well who put it there i don't know I, this is going on and on and on i personally am a fan of the calvin's dad approach to why just make some shit up so i was like okay patrick you know why there's a shoe on top of the dunkin donuts because Santa has to run so fast to deliver all those presents he doesn't actually wear boots like you see in all the pictures he wears sneakers and you got so many presents this year for Christmas that he got really tired after delivering them. So he had to stop at Dunkin' Donuts to get some coffee. But it was really, really cold on Christmas. So he parked the sleigh on the roof and he went into the Dunkin' Donuts. And then trying to get back into his sleigh, his shoe got stuck on the ice on the roof. So he had to leave it behind. And that's why there's a sneaker on the roof of the Dunkin' Donuts. So he goes, oh. And the car is blissfully quiet <laughs> before my sister, for some reason, goes, that's not true, Patrick. God damn it! What do you mean? How do you know that's not true? Well, why would she say that if it's not true? Well, how do you know? Well, then who put it? And I'm like, you know, I ended all this. I, so, I fixed this shit, damn it! Quiet in the car. And she's like, you can't just lie to him. I'm like, yes, you can't. He's three. He thinks that if you put a tooth under his pillow, a fairy comes and leaves money. But Santa wearing sneakers is too far. You can lie to kids. What are they going to do? Sue you? Like, why is that too far? The very fact that Santa exists in the first place. Which, because we apparently have juvenile viewers, he does. He totally does. He totally does. He totally does. But he also, wears also he the tooth sense. fairy does exist, too. Just yeah. Teach. I don't know. I like to think all our viewers have all their grown-up teeth by now. So, yeah, I'm the aunt that tells bullshit stories to my nieces and nephews. Well, I, I told my niece that the bottom half of the casket was closed at my father's funeral because grandpa wasn't wearing any pants. <laughs> this is why I don't have children. They'd be totally fucked up. You just ruin everyone else's. Um, and then it's their job to fix them. Well, having Santa around is fairly ubiquitous for this time of year, but also ubiquitous for this time of year is the Salvation Army bell ringers. Yeah. And one bell ringer in Tennessee. Oh, he ran. He rung his bell. All right. Boy, did he rung his bell. Salvation Army volunteer exposed himself. From Tennessee, a Salvation Army bell ringer stationed outside a Tennessee supermarket exposed himself after a child dropped money in the donation kettle. Oh. Cops are dispatched Thursday afternoon to a food city outlet in Kingsport after a man called 911 to report that a Salvation Army volunteer had, quote, lifted up his red apron and exposed his genitalia which the suspect had pulled from the inside of his pants. Lewd act uh, recurred after Cody Estes, uh, Estes, I think Cody Estes, uh, Estes. four-year-old son placed change in the Salvation Army's trademark red kettle. Estes told police the boy did not notice the volunteer expose himself. While suspect William Martin, 61, initially denied any wrongdoing, he eventually admitted to the illicit act. Not the Jingle Bells we're hoping for this time of year. Oh, a, a review of store surveillance footage reported to show Martin, who was seated in a lawn chair, 
fondling himself under his salvation ap army apron as customers, including children, entered and exited the store. Here's the thing. The Salvation Army, I don't know how many of you know the Salvation Army isn't actually a charity. No. They're a church. Yes. And they're pretty fucking horrible to gay people. Yeah. Um, but apparently they're totally fine with perverts and pedophiles. Yes. So that's nice. Well, that, that that's a church tradition, as I understand it. <sighs> <laughs> not one of the finer ones. Uh, they're I mean... not affiliated with the Catholic Church. I don't know why I'm defending the Catholic Church. <sighs> but they're not affiliated with they're their own entity. And, and a lot they're of don't also know that. They're cool. Not, they're not a charity organization. No. They're not a nonprofit they're organization. A Those bell ringers are fucking scam artists. So great. Now they're jingling their bells for everybody. Mother, the nerve of this son of a bitch. And a lot of people in the chat are bringing up a good point. Rule number one no one wants to see your dick. Especially, you know what? Okay. I could, I still could not condone it, but I could maybe comprehend had the kid, like, I don't know, spat in the kettle or thrown garbage in the kettle or something. No, but no, I didn't see it. the little boy comes up and actually donates money. He gives you the pennies he was going to use to buy his dying mother. Nice <laughs> now she won't look pretty when she meets Jesus. <laughs> and <her> pedophile. <laughs> This is horrible, and yet I'm laughing. Why am I laughing? So, good job. This is that. horrific. I mean, for fuck's sake. Jesus Christ. Are you hearing the voices again? I have a stone deaf cat that every now and then will be like, I'm pretty sure she hears voices. She hallucinates. They tell her to kill, but she's too small. And uncoordinated. Yeah. We had to take away her window bed because she started falling out of it. And we're afraid she'll break a hip or something. Oh. Balance is pretty bad. She loves to jump off high things, but she no longer sticks the landing. So we're having to limit her access to high things. Because we don't want you to hurt yourself. Yeah, whatever. You just hate me. I just want to fly. Kitty can't fly. Well, we have uh, more conventional stupidity, of course, as we are always want to do on this show. Um, first of all, we've got one from Waynesboro, Virginia. Now, marijuana usage is starting to become more acceptable and legal in some places in America. And, you know, it's cool. That's awesome. However, just because it's not quite as frowned upon as it used to be, that doesn't mean they're not going to still have some issues now and again, especially if you annoy them. Marijuana arrest after man phones 911 for rolling papers. What? Man was apparently under the influence of marijuana. We called 911 to ask the telecommunicator for rolling papers. That's not what they do there. Kyle Dustin Head, 24, according to Sergeant Edwards, placed a 911 call in, quote, a disoriented state requesting drug paraphernalia. Not what they do. Also not an emergency. <laughs> oh, it kind of gets it kind of gets better. Um the police found uh Kyle Dunstan Head sitting in a park 25 uh, 2005 Chevrolet pickup truck, which had the strong odor of marijuana emanating from it. Officers found loose particles of leafy plant matter on the dashboard, passenger seat, and on Head's clothing. clothing. According to uh, the uh, officer's statement, it was also found, quote, in his right ear. Did he just get desperate and start <laughs> waving the bag around? Did he just make himself a pot pinata? Head said to officers, he apparently misdialed and thought he had phoned a friend when he asked for rolling papers. 
Does, do his friends answer the phone? 911? What is your emergency? <laughs> also, how many of your friends have three digit phone numbers? Yeah. Well, to be fair, most smartphones have a speed dial button for 911. And who knows anybody's phone number anymore? Like, I live with my boyfriend. You put a gun to my head. I couldn't tell you his phone number. You know why? Because it's programmed into my phone. I only... At work, at, at my job, I have to ask people their own phone numbers all the time. They don't know them because they're programmed into their phone. There's it's only every... one phone number I remember. And it's not even mine. It's, it's, it's... Your, like your childhood phone number? 5532122. That's the only fucking phone yeah. number I can remember. I can't even remember my own phone number half the fucking time. But I Seriously, can you put a gun to my head. I couldn't tell you my boyfriend's phone number, but most smartphones do have, even if you have it locked on a password, you can one button dial 911. Oh, oh, oh. And I remember my best friend's phone number because it plays Good King Wenceslas. Oh. 5523585. It, it does. Maybe you should stop shouting random phone numbers on the air. Without, what are they going to, without a, without a, a, an area code, what the fuck? They, in fact, the area code I had when I was a child no longer You know they exists. can't use the phone number 8675309 anymore because of that fucking song? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> maybe, maybe let's not get people phone harassed. Be like, hey, you know Nash. But just for you fun, Nash? just for fun, 5523585 plays Good King Wenceslas. If you're feeling festive this holiday season. Don't tag. Please don't. It, but it does, though. Just take his word for it. Don't harass the nice people with that phone number in your town. Who the fuck is calling me? My parents used to have their phone, had a, their home phone had a ringtone that played when Irish eyes are smiling. And that's when I realized we were that family. <laughs> We were the really fucking Irish family. Oh, we have uh, more. Okay, we have more Grand Theft Auto adventures. I I seriously think this fucking game has done damage to the criminal element in our country. You know what Grand Theft Auto needs? What? A Santa sleigh option. I'm pretty sure they have that in Saints Row Three. Really? I'm you can drive around on Santa's sleigh and fuck shit up. I'm willing to bet someone answer if it's it's probably in Saints Row because you can do all manner of Saints Row Four. Because yeah. I will buy that game. Just yeah, that Saints game. Row has that in four. It flies. You can Santa sleighs. And, see, I I I didn't. I never even played the game, and I knew that. That's awesome. Well. I think the problem with the Grand Theft Auto is it's sort of damaging people's perceptions of what an appropriate target might be. Man, Nash, you can't go blaming the video games. Man makes getaway in 20 ton garbage truck. Can't get it out of first gear. Stolen getaway vehicles go. A 20 ton garbage truck is more furious. Furious. Really? Furious. Really? That doesn't even really work. John Morcombe wrote this article, ladies and gentlemen. Furious. Shame. And fast. Where's my bell? Like the Game of Thrones nun. Shame. 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 Furious than fat. Oh, especially when the thief can't get it out of first gear. You know, Eventually, how many problems in the world exist because of a guy who can't get it out of first gear? I think that alone explains Donald Trump. Man drove all the way to Mossman, a distance of 13 kilo, uh, kilometers, uh, at less than 20 kilometers an hour in first gear before being caught. Just before officers swooped in and caught him, the 28-year-old pulled the truck, its engine screaming, to a 7-Eleven store and allegedly used the truck driver's credit card to buy cigarettes and other items. Well, that's just rude. I mean, at least he didn't steal a fucking ambulance. Like, the worst thing that's going to happen here is some people are going to have to wait an extra day to have their garbage carted away. And they're going to have to fix the transmission on that thing. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, as far as problems caused to the public... Yeah. At least nobody's going to fucking die because of this asshole. Like, 
their garages are going to be a little smelly for an extra day. It's like there are literally people who do not understand what the stick shift is for. Yeah, I can't drive a stick. I understand what it's for. I can't drive a stick. They get in the car and they're like, "Okay, I'm going to put it in car to drive. Wow. This this (laughs) this is wobblier than I remember. (laughs) When you I'm aware that I can't operate a clutch. So I well, I mean, I wouldn't steal a car anyway, but if I was going to go with an automatic. Yeah. Yeah. Put a garbage truck. Yeah, that's a stinky getaway. Who this is? Who sees the the garbage truck pull up and go? I got a plan. Also, that's really your getaway car should be inconspicuous. I'm telling you, steal a fucking Honda Civic. Yeah, no one's gonna. It's reliable. It's not gonna break down. It's probably an automatic transition, and there's one every three feet in America, so nobody's going to look the other way. You can diss the fuck up here. Yeah. Steal a Honda Civic. Not just, Honda Civic, because that's what I drive. Just, that is, that is dickishness beyond, I mean, for fuck's sake. Use the guy's credit card, that's just mean. Although, why was his credit card in the garbage truck? Like, did he forget his wallet? No, I bet what happened was they pulled up, they started picking up the garbage, they were dumping it in the back, this jackass hops in and drives away. Oh. So they were just left standing in the middle of a neighborhood at like five in the morning? Yep. While the car goes down the road. And they're listening to their transmission die. Yep. I mean, it, 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 this is the I mean, this is the limit of your vision, of your criminal aspiration. Your the plan Joker is disappointed in you. Your plan is you're gonna wait for the garbage truck. You're gonna hop in, drive away, and then you're gonna get a sweet, sweet carton of cigarettes at the Seven Eleven. And you have stolen garbage. And you're prob- you're going to jail. You're going the fuck to jail. To steal garbage. <sighs> maybe he knew about something in that garbage. Like maybe somebody was getting rid of a body or threw away priceless jewels and he knew about it and was trying to get to something in that garbage. I doubt. I doubt very much. I doubt it too, but you never know. Because you know why? Because stuck in first gear the entire fucking way. Yeah. All right. This last one. (sighs) Ladies and gentlemen, get ready. This is the anti-heartwarming story. This is... You know, it's you normally get to this time of the year and you want the heartwarming stories about families at Christmas and giving and the spirit of goodness and all these wonderful. I have found a story that is like you take that story and this is that story's antichrist. I don't want this story. You don't want this story. Well, we're getting the story, Terry. We're getting everyone. I don't want it. Get ready to be mad. This is, I swear to you, the worst people, or the worst person in the entire fucking world. See, Miracle agrees with me. Mom shaved daughter's head, told her she was dying <gasps> for cancer scam. No. Enberg, Texas. Authorities in Texas say they arrested a mother accused of shaving her seven-year-old daughter's head and fraudulently claiming the child had cancer. The Hidalgo County Sheriff's Officer said Juanita Garcia, 46, organized multiple fundraisers to obtain money she claimed she needed for her seven-year-old daughter's cancer treatments. The Sheriff's Office said a joint investigation with Child Protective Service found Garcia would tell people in person and on social media the child was terminal and only had months to live. 
Authorities say Garcia went so far as to shave her daughter's head and actually convince the child she was suffering from the disease. However, instead, investigators say the girl is actually in perfect health. Oh my god. Yeah, you're a really terrible goddamn human being. Just do that to your kid. Must. Fuck! Also, you're stupid because what's your end game? Either that child needs a miracle cure or that child's gonna die. I'm pretty sure you're not gonna murder your child. God, I hope you're not gonna murder your child. There's gonna be no medical records. Like. But that's not even the worst part. The worst part is it's a repugnant fucking thing to do. Oh. And you're a horrible human being. I really hope that ch child is not with her anymore. They took that kid away, right? <laughs> they took that kid away. <sighs> oh my god. What a thing to do to a kid. Like, that is this the worst. Hmm. I cannot sum up just it, my, it, but, that, yeah. And the thing is, well, I wonder, was she actually making her daughter sick? Or no, it doesn't say that. Okay? Yeah, just shaving her head and told her, you're going to die. Oh, that poor kid. I don't I, I, I have I have nothing funny to say. This You're going to hell. That's a horrible You're thing to do to a kid. Absolutely going to hell. Like the people that scam people with their own fake diseases are bad enough, but like you psychologically tortured your kid. That's a whole other I know. Life. Shame on you. Shame, 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 shame. It's like I'm 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 loath to say this, and I'm not saying this as a Schadenfreude thing or as a joke. People who fuck with kids do not do well in prison. No. So like there's no happy ending here. Well, maybe. Because what I'd like to ask is since it is the holiday season, for those of you who are watching here on, on Radio Dead Air. Um, you don't have to attach our name to this. You don't have to, like, do it in our name or anything. But what I'd like you to do, if you've got a couple extra dollars laying around this holiday season, is go to the Make-A-Wish Foundation's website. Yes. And you got, like, $2 or, like, $5 or you could dig in your couch cushions or some shit. Just kick them some change this year. Whatever you can throw, just go go ahead and do that. Because I would like there to be something good come from this horrible collection of bullshit, batshit, crazy shit that I do every fucking week. And make a wish from everything I've heard are actually really legit. Like Yes. Make a wish is good people. Really nice things for kids that are sick and they're not fucking around. Like the Red Cross now, their CEO is basically bankrupting them and it's total totally corrupt now. Yeah, so I I'll put a link somewhere around this thing on the video when I put it up and just, that would be a really nice thing to do yes because do do something good also don't steal garbage trucks yeah why would you do be nice to children even if they're screaming in the mall yeah and you're not getting they can't help it yeah and uh, also 911 is uh not not going to help you with your with, with no not not going to help you with rolling papers for your weed they're, they're there to help you with many th many things but they're not Nor can you make weed airborne no matter how hard you shake it around the car <laughs> i'm pretty sure you cannot create weed weed in a gaseous form that way i could be wrong i'm not an expert we've learned the salvation army's bell ringers kind of take their job description a little too far sometimes yeah. We've learned we don't need a candy cane in exchange for our donation. 
We've learned that if you don't go out committing crimes dressed as Santa, you oh, fuck. Oh, didn't like that joke? We had to grumble at that joke? Fine. She's, she's still got the fucking thing on grumble. She does, because it looks so cool. And we've learned that in Sweden, they take setting a goat on fire very fucking seriously. They do. That's some serious shit, setting a goat on fire. Kitty cat. Why have I been awoken from my slumber? Why am I wearing this thing? It's like you've got, you remember the Golden Girls? What was Dorothy's mom name? Sophia. Sophia. It's like Sophia is a cat. She is. She is Sophia in cat form. She's my grumpy little old lady. You're a little smelly. We might have to give you a bath. <laughs> 